again for uh, coming and joining us for another segment of Meet the Agent. Um, I'm your host, Alexis Sties, and I'm here with uh, Jillian Hawkins-Zorn. She is an expert realtor out of Texas. Uh, she services the uh, Collin, Tarrant, and Denton area and part of Dallas as well. So first, I just wanted to say uh, thank you so much, uh, Jillian, for uh, joining us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you inviting me. Oh, of course. We're excited to have you. Um, so I'm curious, um, how long have you been in real estate? Well, I have been in real estate for 37 years. I've been an agent for eight years. That's amazing. <laughs> I've done just about every sec, every part of real estate that you could possibly do. <laughs> That's great. And so in those years that you've been uh, in real estate and then also uh, specifically working as a real estate agent, can you talk about some of the most impactful changes that you've seen uh, come about? The most impactful, of course, and this is something everyone would say, is technology. That has impacted our, our, um, uh, our profession enormously. And how so? Well, because um, there's so much information on the internet anymore. Someone can go to the internet and read all about how to buy and sell homes. And um, they can find, if you're a buyer, you can find any home that you want. You really don't need an agent to show you homes or send you homes. You can go anywhere on the internet and find homes. And then, of course, you can go to the open houses. Um, so that's been a real challenge for agents and I would suspect that it's a challenge in the end for buyers and sellers because they go on and then they think that they have all the knowledge that they need and then they get into the transaction and maybe they don't. Understood. And so when you are, uh, as, as let's say this is your, your first time home buyer, um, and you're just going into this, when you are interviewing agents, how do you know when you found the right one for you? Well, oftentimes, you know, they say, well, you know, you want to have an agent that knows the area. Well, yes, that is important. So you do want to sit down and ask the agent, do they know the area? But the most important thing is, how competent are they? How many transactions have they done? Do they have, uh, do they have um, uh, referrals? And you really want to interview them as to what challenge, what, what are some of the major challenges that they have come across in their career that they have overcome? And you want to listen for what they did and in, in their competency in the challenges challenge and how they overcame that because when you get into a real estate transaction there are so many people involved there's over 15 people just if you're buying a house that's not if you're buying and selling or maybe maybe you're buying a house and the seller is buying and selling well that affects you so um you just want to make sure that uh the agent is competent in the present con real estate condition, the, the whole overall condition, the market condition. Now, transitioning more into the side of the perspective of the uh, real estate professional. Um, so now in this age, in this information, the digital age that we're in, where uh, you can find, do a search for anything and you can find, you know, a myriad of realtors at your fingertips with a simple search. How uh, do you as a realtor uh, make it a point of separating yourself and standing out from your competition? Well, it's, it's challenging. It's very challenging because we could all say that we have all the same competencies. So how do you do that? Well, number one, you have to have technology. Number two, you have to be on top of your business every single day. You've got to be communicating. The number one failure of agents is communication. And you will find that with even uh, it polls will tell you that the number one failure with agents is communication. So how do you do that with the technology age when people don't want to talk to you on the phone? They don't want to hear from you. So how do you do that? Well, you text them, you call them, you email them, you text them, you call them, you email them, and you continually do it and you continually show up and uh, do like what we're doing. You do interviews. There's a lot of different marketing tools that you have to do. You almost have to pull everything out of your hat that you could possibly pull out 
to stand out from the rest. And, and that's videos. That's every, you know, Facebook, social media show up everywhere. I, yeah, I, I would say. <laughs> No, I think that's very important. Yeah, especially now um, when just as you're saying that basically, I know I personally never answer a phone call from my cell phone from a number I don't recognize unless I'm expecting that call. So exactly. I, um, I, yeah, I think video messaging and stuff like that would be is a great way to kind of separate yourself um, and give people a, a feel uh, for who you are without speaking to you. Right. You know, uh, one thing that I did was I did a commercial. So, you know, when I first touch someone, I introduce myself and I, I reach out the first time and then the second time or the third time or so I'll, uh, I'll introduce myself and I'll, and I'll just say, please let me introduce myself. And so I'll do that through text and I'll do it through email. And, um, I, I hope to grab them through that. So, um, um, the, and you can always improve every single day you have to improve on what you're doing. And so uh, talking, going back to what you're saying about um, how you have to have technology and use it and have that on your side in order to be successful as an agent. Um, that's kind of where a service is like set schedule. We kind of try to step in as a way to, uh, to offer technology for um, realtors to use it to enhance their business. Uh, but a lot of people do get frustrated. A lot of agents, uh, if they're new to internet leads um, and kind of unfamiliar because there is a big difference using internet leads versus a referral from somebody you know or you know closing transactions with your sphere of influence or somebody who knows who you are. So can you tell us a little bit about your process? Like what is it that you do when you get a new internet lead? How do you make those connections and how do you really uh, get through to people when you, as you stated, we're in an age when people don't really like to get on the phone? Well, uh, it is so important to have a good C CRM with automatic drips that include calling, reminding you to call, that, that um, incorporate a whole system, texting, emailing, and calling. So uh, with my uh, CRM that I use, we put, a, we put each lead into that system. So the system is texting them, the system is emailing them, and we always put them on a home drip so that they go, we wanna capture them into our website. And uh, you gotta make sure your website's really robust. And um, so, and, and, the, and follow that system. If it tells you you've got to text or you got to call them, you got to do that that day or the system doesn't work. There's a breakdown in your system. So, and it's, and it's difficult to do. And so, um, especially if you get busy, how do you take the time or make the time to, um, to do that? Well, um, you get up at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> If you've got a full day of showing or something, you've got to get up early. A lot of times real uh, agents will think, well, you know, I worked all day yesterday. I didn't get finished till, you know, 10 or 11 or 12 o'clock last night. Well, if you have a full day the next day, you still have to get up and you've got to get on your computer and spend at least three hours a day, at least. Because the number one thing that drives your business is prospecting. So with set schedule, the nice thing about set schedule is that you're getting these leads, you're accepting these leads. Well, not all of them are going to be good. And that is with any lead generating um, um, mechanism or company that you use. So you've got to get your nose. You've got to get through those nose and you've got to pick up the phone. The hardest thing for an agent to do, and it's still hard for me is to pick up the phone, to sit down for an hour and pick up that phone and have those conversations. And um, I would say that a lot of agents, it, when you first sit down, you're going to have that trepidation, like, oh, I don't want to do this. I just, but you've got to pick up that phone and start doing it. Uh, that's the most important thing. Yeah, I think that is uh, definitely um, the, you know, that everybody, I think, across every industry that we struggle with is follow through. It's easy to come up with a plan, but then you have to actually execute that plan. Um, sticking with it can be the challenging part. Yeah. And I took a, I, I took some coaching programs because 
I, you know, I was, I've been in real estate for 37 years, but when I became a real estate agent, all that experience from real estate was only applicable after I had a client. It was not applicable before. I had no idea how to get my first client. None whatsoever. <laughs> Well, and so with that coaching, can you share um, uh, some of the tips or tricks that you can use to adjust your mindset so that you do actually follow through, you get up at early morning and make your calls? Well, I think the most important thing is your system, because if you're not confident with your system and you're fumbling around every day and you're spending time trying to organize yourself, you can forget it. You've already lost the battle. You have to have a system that when you sit down at your desk, it's organized for you already. And you sit down in front of, you sit down, you meditate a minute. You've got to sit down and get yourself in the mindset of doing this. Um, and don't listen to yourself. Just get in action. Don't listen to that voice in your head. Just take action, 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 and just ignore the voice. And if you need to sit down and do a, an um meditation, you know, whatever it takes, get on the phone. Absolutely. I've tried to, I've started trying to think about that voice because you think of it, that voice in your head, you think it's you, but it's, I've tried to start thinking about it as it's a, it's another voice. It's not me that's saying this. I know what I need to do. And so I need to follow through with that, not listen to that voice. Like you're saying. That's right. Cause I, you know, I've been, I'm, I've done several coaching programs and I still do not like to get on the phone. So I just have to ignore it. I just completely ignore it. Yeah, right. You and you have, have to, to become masterful with ignoring your voice in your head. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or I always remind myself, I don't have to want it to do it. I just have to do it. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> and so, and we mentioned um, earlier, I know you, is, you have a huge uh, territory that you service um, within Texas. And so I imagine, um, you know, that's got to be not only about the time on the phone that you're taking, managing all of that, but a lot of miles on your car, gas in your tank, all that kind of stuff. So how is it that you're able to manage working uh, such a wide area? Well, because um, each buyer that you have, they have a particular area that they want to go to. And you just have to do it. And um, often, you know, I, I just have to sit down and manage my time. If, if I have my set schedule set, and then I have a buyer that calls and says, I need to go. I want to look at a home in Fort Worth. So I'm in Dallas and they want to look at a home in Fort Worth. I have to take a minute and recalibrate my schedule. You know, the, the, and I've done this just gone. Okay. You know, you get a buyer, you're like, I got a buyer, I got a buyer, I got to go, you know, and I've done it that way. And I still do it that way to some degree. But I always sit down and say, okay, wait a minute. What's the most important thing in my business? Prospecting. How do I get those clients that call me and want to go look? Prospecting. When am I going to put my prospecting in today? So you have to be mindful and very, you have to master your time management so that you can drop everything and go show. Yeah, because I, I think, yeah, a lot of uh, realtors, they tend to get, um, stuck in the their as a small proximity like they know this area very very well and so they just want to stay there and you can be um but and they uh, are reluctant to go outside of that territory for just all those challenges that you were bringing up but. well too you know you have google maps look at where you're going and look at this you know look at enlarge it and look what's going on around it where are the schools where you know that's very quick and, um, and I always print off all of the, uh, the sheets, you know, for my homes and I'll make notes on those sheets. What schools are there? the sheet? Our, um, the MLS already tells you what school system they're in. Do a quick, uh, greater great schools.com. See what they're, see what they are, see what the schools are rated at and do a Google so that you can know what's, 
what's around it? Where is the gross, the grocery stores? Where are the, where are the restaurants? You know, you don't have to know everything. You just have to know enough that, that, that the items that are the most important to people, entertainment, food, <laughs> groceries, schools. I try to simplify. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it makes sense. That's uh, what else could you need to know? I mean, if you have a competent realtor, the rest they'll figure out. <laughs> yeah, right. And two, people don't mind you saying, you know, I don't know that, but I'll find that out and get it. I'll get it back to you once I get back to the office. I'll get all that. That's a, no, that's a great idea because two, I always say too, that that now uh, by doing that, now you've turned one interaction into two, because as long as you follow up with them and actually give them the information that you said you're going right. to get. And then you have that opportunity to go above and above board and get them more information than what they asked you to give them. Absolutely. I think that's a really great point. Um, and do you have a team that you work with? Or are you out there on your own? Well, I'm out on my own for right now. I was on teams. You know, I, I really learned how to do real estate by being on teams. And um, I love collaborating with other agents. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm not on a team now, but um, it's, I really like teams. I think I encourage people to be on teams. Um, there's an upside to teams and there's a downside to teams. Um, they're going to take some of your pay, but if you're on a good team, you're going to learn a ton. And eventually, you can go out on your own once you know what you need to know to sustain a, a good business. And um, so that that's what I have to say about teams. <laughs> I'm out on my own now because I just, I want to make my full commission. And um, so I've been out on my own for about a year and a half, two years now, about a year and a half. And I took a hit. I took a big hit uh, going out on my own. So you definitely need to be uh, saving your money and have a good business plan. Uh, sometimes we don't take the time to have a good long-term business plan to follow so that we can be here on a team or not on a team or whatever, and then follow through financially with what we need to do to build our business over a period of time. Gotcha. And for that business plan that you're talking about, is it something that you sort of uh, like an abstract, do you keep in mind your goals or do you actually sit down and put it to pen and paper? What exactly you want to accomplish in the year ahead? I put it to pen and paper every year. And, um, but you have to start with a five-year plan so that you can measure yourself, you know, see where you are. Uh, every year I evaluate my business, you know, wh where did I, wh where did I succeed and where did I fail? Because uh, if you don't have a measuring stick, you don't have the, you kind of just, there's no way you can grow a business that way. Businesses don't, don't grow with, you know, just flying by the seat of your pants. You really, whether you're on a team or not, even if you're on a team, you've got to have your own business plan. Absolutely. I think they are really useful and also helping you to keep uh, perspective because without that, you're sort of uh, vulnerable to, um, you know, however your emotions or how you feel that day. So if you feel like you're doing bad in business, if you don't have something to actually black and white numbers as to how you're doing, then that can throw off your mindset and then throw off your business. Well, and two, if you're not accomplishing, if, if your business isn't growing you and you're, and you're not accomplishing every day, uh, the six, you know, the forwarding of your business. Why, you know, uh, where do you go? If you don't have a plan, where do you go to find the answers of why you're not doing what you need to do? I mean, you have to have a business plan down to every day, what your everyday schedule should look like. That's how myopic your business plan should be year, month, week, day and people hear this all the time I when I first started I heard, I heard that all the time and I didn't do it and um because sometimes when we're failing we don't want to really know we just we just want to 
you know, mindlessly just keep working, working, working. Well, if I just do more, if I do more, if I do more, no, you've got to stop, look at your business plan, see where it is that you're not doing what you said it was going to take for you to be successful. And then if you're not, and you really want to be in real estate, go find a coach. Yeah, I think uh, mentorship is, uh, is yeah, paramount, especially if you're new to the industry with any kind of, you need a mentor. And so we've touched on, you know, the importance of a, a CRM, a mentor, um, you know, follow through, everything like that. Uh, is there anything else that you would uh, advise agents that are just starting to get into working either with set schedule specifically or just internet leads in general? Like, how do you be successful? Well, let's talk about set schedule for just a minute. Uh, set schedule. When I first came on set schedule, I loved the way that you guys put, put it together. And I have someone I work with that's kind of my partner and, uh, he, he holds me to account. And, uh, so we talk every month and, um, I really love that because I feel like I'm collaborating with someone. I, I like working with uh, teams and, and collaborating. It, it really helps. Sometimes you feel like an island if you're not. Um, and I share some of my, I share my uh, commissions with him. And, and I don't mind at all because he and I are partners and we're in business together. Uh, the, the leads, um, you've got, you've got to go through you got to churn those leads. You've got to get those no's and get them out of your way. Get them, archive them, get rid of them so that you can get to those yeses. So that's the way set schedule works. You've got a lot of leads. So, um, and a lot of them aren't good, but you're going to have that with any um, lead generator that you have. Even if you have Facebook leads on your own, you know, it, it's just the way it is. It's a numbers game. It's just, uh, if you're new to internet lead generation, get some scripts. When I started, I did not want to do scripts. I was like, oh my God. Oh, but I, um, went through some scripts. I got a script from, um, from a coaching program that I used. And I, when I'm not doing well, I go, Hmm how much have I been using my script? And I go back to it and I will invariably find that I was failing to follow certain parts of my script. And so um, scripts keep you on track. It keeps your, uh, it keeps your quality up so that when you're calling a lead and you do get on the phone, you can really qualify that lead. So that's the most important is qualifying your lead, because if you don't qualify your lead uh, appropriately, you're going to be out showing someone homes that can't even qualify for a loan or there. They have circumstances that are going to enter that, that will interfere with uh, completing the transaction. So you want to make sure that you qualify that lead and ask them at least five questions. So, you know, um, uh, are, uh, what are, what's their income? What's their annual income? What's their credit score? Uh, are both people going to be on the loan? How long have they been working? You know, a lot of people just got a new job or they just changed jobs, which is no big deal. Uh, because you can work with your lender to get them um, where they need to be to enter into, uh, 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 buying a home. So you just want to make sure you qualify your leads. If you're, if you're talking to sellers, you've got to qualify them completely different. How many agents have they looked, have they been talking to? How soon do they want to sell? How serious are they? You know, uh, what do they have in mind for the, the a price for their, their home? Um, you want to really fish those people out too, because, um, they may be just tire kickers and then you, and I've done this, I've gone over and spent an hour and a half with someone doing a, a presentation just to walk away and never hear from them again. 
because they were just tire kickers. So if you're new to internet, internet leads, you get someone on the phone, you want to establish a rapport first, and then just ask them. People appreciate you being efficient with your questions, but not, uh, don't be a Gestapo with them. <laughs> you don't want to be a Gestapo. You want to be friendly and, and uh, have a conversation. And through the conversation, ask your questions. Well, thank you so much, Jillian. It was an absolute pleasure speaking with you today. I really appreciate you uh, going out of your way to make yourself available, especially on a Friday. Uh, I know Fridays can be very busy for realtors. My pleasure. It's really a joy. Thank you so much for inviting me on. I appreciate that. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks again.